Oh guys, it's a chook man here once again. I think I need to tell you a little story on the chook man about grieving and losing a loved one so you understand fully that uh, I grieve too, yeah, and I hurt and I cry and I fall to bits but I try to somehow pick up all my pieces and move on with my life, not forgetting the person that's uh, passed away. So... I'm going to tell you, this is not easy for me to tell this story, but I'm going to say it anyway because I know people that are grieving and having a hard time dealing with grieving can grieve and somehow move on and not let it destroy your life. Because I'm telling you now, coming from me, I nearly let it destroy my life big times. I was... I went for I went to do some shopping one day down at Preston Market. For all you people that don't know Preston Market, it's a big supermarket down here in Preston. I was doing my shopping and uh, I seen this uh, lady. Um, she was trying to light up a cigarette and um, her her um, lighter was going out. Anyway, I walked up to her. I said, "Here you go. And here, if you want a light, I'll give you a light." So I gave her a light and I lit a cigarette up and. Um, she goes, I knew you were going to come over. Anyway, we got talking. Anyway, lo and behold, I didn't know where this was, where this was going, this this um, journey. But I, I, I just, I took it. Well, it was still there. So I gave her a light, and um, she had some tattoos on her hands, like myself here. And uh, we got talking, and um, I don't know. We just talked for a long, long time, and. Uh, I said to her, oh, yeah, what are you doing later? She said, oh, nothing much. I said, well, I'm going to go home and go, go buy a slab of beer, come home to my front porch, put some Slim Dusty on it, and um, have a beer. This was over 15 years ago, guys. And um, anyway, she said, oh, well, I'll, I'll um, come down to your house if you're not doing anything. And I said, yeah, but you've got to behave yourself. Any nonsense, and uh, I'll show you. I'll show you the front door. You'll go out as quick as you come in. Anyway, we um we met later on that day. I went down. She come here. I picked her up in my um XC car, which I haven't got anymore. And on the way, we got talking about you know things about things you know like what she was doing and where she was in life, and you know just a quick conversation. Anyway, so she come back to my joint and we went down to Dan Murphy's and we got a slab of beer and we come home and uh, we sat there talking about stuff, you know. Like you do when you first meet someone. She hadn't met me and I hadn't met her and I said, I love all your tattoos. And she said, oh, you love tats. Anyway, she pulled off her shirt. <laughs> and I said, hey, don't, don't get too excited. She goes, no, nah, look on my back. Anyway, her whole back was covered in tattoos. And down her arms. And I said, shit, that, that'll tell you a story or two. She goes, yeah, yeah. I used to be um, mucking around with the old bikers years ago. She was in her 50s when I met her. Anyway, so many drinks that night. We had plenty of drinks, plenty of conversations. And we sort of hit it off. It was weird because I never thought I could meet someone like this. Anyway, to cut a long story short, many years went past. I think four years went past and um, she'd already told me that she had a drug habit. Um, she was a heroin taker. And I told her when I first met her, I said, you won't be doing that at my joint because I won't put up with that. You have to go and get help. You have to go to rehab. You have to go here. You have to go there. And I took her to lots of places. She goes, can you help me? And I said, yeah, no worries. So I took her down Fitzroy where there was many, many, many places that um, – help people that have got drug problems and I took her to places and um, she didn't stay there. She got she got in there and then a couple of days later she gave me a phone call. She goes, oh, I'm on my way to see you. And I said to her, what about rehab? You just kind of chuck rehab in the bin? She goes, yeah, it doesn't work. I'm better off doing it myself. I'm better off getting off heroin myself. And I thought, really? You're really not going to sit it through and go through the hard times and get off this shit before it ruins your life? Anyway, she come back to me and um, had a couple of drinks. And I could tell she'd been using drugs. I'm not silly. And I said to her, you know, you've got to do something because if you don't do something soon, 
this will end up killing you, you know, you, you can OD on this shit, and you can die, you know, and she goes, nah, I've been using heroin for a long, long time, and I thought, you know, you're playing with the devil when you're doing this shit, anyway, you're old enough to know better, so she went about her, her uh, doing what she's done, she disappeared for a couple of days, and then she turned up, and there she was, anyway, she disappeared one day, and this is hard to tell the story, and um, I never seen her for two weeks, and the phone didn't ring, and I missed her, you know, she was a bit of a character, she reminded me a lot like me, but I wasn't on drugs, you know what I mean, she was a character, anyway, um, I got a knock on the door that I never ever wanted to have that knock on the door, one of my neighbours here in Preston knocked on my door and said, your partner, she's dead around the corner, she's laying on the ground. And I said, really? Yeah, yeah, Sandy, she's dead, this lady that found us. He said she'd been there all night. Anyway, so I, I went around there and shock. Here she was laying on the ground, she was in the fetal position, she was all curled up. She was all blue in the face. I had tears rolling down my eyes as I was shaking her. Sandy, you got to wake up. you got to wake up. Anyway, she had a needle in her arm. and I, I couldn't wake her up anyway, so I called the ambulance, the fire brigade. Called the, They all rocked up the fire brigade first, then the police, and then an ambulance. Anyway, she'd been laying there all night, and I didn't know. Honestly, hand on heart, I didn't know that she was there all night. Um, she'd OD'd, she'd stuck a needle in her arm and pushed that shit into her veins. And uh, I found her the next day. Well, my neighbours did. And then they come and told me. And then um, they took her away. And um, they'd done an autopsy on her. Anyway, they had her at the autopsy place for two weeks and I started getting upset, grieving. And the lady um, rang me from the autopsy and she said, uh, oh, hi, it's such and such here. And I said, oh, how are you going? Um, she goes, are you, you okay? Are you coping all right? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm all right. She said, um, Sandy had enough heroin in her to kill a bull. And not only did she have heroin... In her system, she had pills as well. And um, she has quite a other cocktail of um, medication in her. And the heroin was the one that um, finished her off. So it's not your fault. You know, she, she wouldn't have lived through that anyway. So anyway, I pulled my socks up, as they say, and... Um, I buried her in Mansfield, and um, I'm hard, man. You could come and punch me in the head, and I'd laugh at you. You could chuck rocks at me. You could run me over with a car. Um, it wouldn't worry me, but to bury a, a loved one, and from a sad story, that's a kick in the gut, so I know about grieving, yeah? I know what it's like to hurt. I know what it's like to find someone you love dead on the gutter and I know what it's like to to grieve you know and hurt but you know out of all of it you've got to let it go in the end and you've got to move on in life because if you don't grieving it will destroy you and you'll never get on with your life you know I'm so lucky now I've met a beautiful lady again that I never thought, I turned into a Shrek. And I thought, I'm never ever going to go through that again. And I turned into a green Shrek. You know, um, if you don't know what a Shrek is, get the movie in, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, um, I know, guys, I know what it's like to hurt. When I think of that story, I get a big lump in my throat. But you know, at the end of the day, I said to her, you have to get help. But the moral to this story is, don't let grief destroy you. Somehow, you've got to pick yourself up and soldier on in life. And that's that's talking about grief. All right, guys? 
I see a lot of people let grief destroy them. And it's not good. It's so sad that that person hasn't learned to let go of that grief. Don't ever forget who that person was. But let grief go. Have your sad times and and all that. It's called grieving um, and emotions. So don't ever think that Chuck Man's bulletproof because he's not. I've got a heart and I hurt too. But unfortunately, you've got to move on in life. And remember that person. Even if it's they died like my partner died like that, I'll never forget how she passed away. But she chose that road and I couldn't help her. There was no way in the world I could have helped her. And when the Con- Con- the Connery people told me she had a lot of drugs in her system, you know, and I tried to tell her those drugs one day will kill you and she didn't listen to me and... So a lot of people out there on YouTube land will um, relate to this and the sadness you go through when someone passes away and you've got to get their funeral ready and you've got to go to their funeral and you've got to harden up and you've got to stand there and you've got to look at the coffin. It's not an easy thing to do, man. You know, I had that lady on the back of my Harley. You know, for many months and many years that went past, I looked and I could see her there, but I knew in the back of my mind she was gone. So, yeah. All right, guys, that's enough of that because it's really upsetting me. I'm just talking about grief and trying to show people another part of me and you all need to grieve and you all need to go through those are different emotions but after a while, you need to let it all go. Not forgetting who that person was, but you have to move on in life if you're going to get anywhere. All right, guys, as I always say, keep out of the sun, be kind to yourself, and try to have a nice day.